All right, what's good, everybody? Before you start disliking the video, please hear me out. I really appreciate it and hear everything thoroughly on what I have to say. If you do not care about Pokemon not having a national dex and Pokemon Sword and Shield, this video is not for you. My goal in today's video is to express why for many, the national dex is very important and why it matters in Pokemon games and more importantly, with Pokemon Sword and Shield. Another thing, I wouldn't like to speak for myself, but I do think regardless without the national decks, Pokemon Sword and Shield will still be a solid Pokemon game. No Pokemon game has gotten reviewed in my honest opinion, unless it's some spinoff under like seven and seven's okay to some people really amazing. So get that out there. We not hating on Pokemon Sword and Shield because of all the stuff they presented so far. What's good? What's poppin' my people? It's Avatar Yaya, back like I never left with another Pokemon related video. It's been since Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee since I last made a Pokemon related content video. Today, I'm gonna be talking about something very controversial, but first, I gotta give you guys my background with Pokemon games so y'all won't be like, oh, he don't even know what he's talking about. I got you. So I've been playing Pokemon all my life. I played Pokemon from like off rip out birth low key. I'm 20 plus years old and legit Pokemon is one of my favorite video game franchises ever. Like literally Pokemon has been there in the darkest of times, the scariest of times for me. I played every Pokemon game at least twice besides maybe a spinoff like Pokemon channel or was something on the GameCube or Wii that I just did not care for at all. But I've played every Pokemon game from XD, Gala of Darkness, to Coliseum, to Snap, to Pokemon, Pikachu's Adventures, I've played all of it. We finally get to Pokemon Generation 7, Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Moon era, and literally that's when I stopped playing Pokemon. That was like my drawing point for me because those games just bored me. I don't find them to be bad games. I don't find them games to suck. I'm just gonna be 100% honest with everybody that I do think those are the weakest in the Pokemon franchise. Then we finally get to Pokemon Sword and Shield. Looked phenomenal, looked unbelievably different from all of the other past Pokemon games. Everyone was stoked, everyone was excited. They showed off the starters. They all looked pretty cool. And then Masuda and Game Freak attacked. You might see the theme of Avatar I'm trying to play here. That Pokemon Sword and Shield will no longer have or not have a national dex. So you guessed it, this is about Pokemon Sword and Shield bringing back the national dex. When this was first told and explained to the world, the video has been downvoted really badly on YouTube with 77,000 dislikes. Never in history will I ever think I would see that. And pretty much that hashtag, bring back national dex, the hashtag refers to an ongoing Pokemon feature where players are allowed to have a full Pokedex of monsters. In most cases, you unlock the ability to get the national dex after you beat the game. In Sword and Shield, not only is that not an option right now, even after you beat the game or even with the inclusion of Pokemon Home, the only Pokemon you can transfer are Pokemon from the Galar region only into Pokemon Sword and Shield. Example, if Crobat's not in the Galar decks, he won't be transferable even with the use of Pokemon Home. Alright, now we get into why the Pokemon Sword and Shield National Dex matters. The meat and potatoes of the video and why y'all here. So this is my breakdown of this. Pokemon is a unique RPG franchise to where your main goal at this point is just not only playing through the game's narrative and post-game content. There is so much more you can do in Pokemon ever since Gen 2 than just that. Battling, catching, trading, unlocking can give you as much or even more replay value and continuous playtime than just playing through the main game of Pokemon. Growing up and trading Pokemon and catching them all may be a majority of fans' favorite aspect of Pokemon games. If you want to be real realistic about it, look at the dislikes on the reveal of Pokemon Sword and Shield's gameplay footage and when they actually revealed about the Pokédex. A lot of fans dislike what was shown right here. 
I have sentimental value with a lot of Pokemon I've had for years because of connections and people I've met through these games. In high school, I made friends from Pokemon Battle in the anime club after school, and even growing up, my grandmother gave me Pokemon games. Right now, currently, she is no longer here, so to remind me, I constantly transfer a Blaziken to each game with my starter. I transfer my shiny Blaziken from Pokemon Sapphire all the way to Pokemon Ultra Sun, and that shiny Blaziken at this point would be like 17 years old, low key. <laughs> <laughs> the Pokemon that so far is not confirmed to be in the Galar Pokedex for Sword and Shield. I'll be highly upset if I cannot transfer some of my favorite Pokemon ever that I had over decades plus of time. I had this worry on the reveal of Pokemon Sword and Shield when they first revealed the Pokemon starters because I was already wondering how will I be able to get our Pokemon from 3DS to Nintendo Switch. Was Grand Feet going to upgrade Pokemon Bank and integrate it with Nintendo accounts and eShop in a way? But then Nintendo Galaxy brained and announced Pokemon Home where it's pretty much a Pokemon mobile app version of Pokemon Bank well, it will let me transfer Pokemon anywhere, but the dream kind of fell flat with the Galar decks only in Pokemon Sword and Shield, so I'm kind of like, uh, yeah. Another thing with this ordeal is that Pokemon Generation 5, the black and white collection of games, has a total of 649 Pokemon you can collect overall. We are now four games into the 3D era of Pokemon, two whole console generations ahead, and now adding all the Pokemon to the games is too much work. Now back then, if for people that don't know, making sprites for video games is really hard. On this channel, I talk about a lot of fighting games, and one of the fighting games that suffer from sprites is Blazoo Cross Tag Battle. It takes forever to make sprites for fighting games, and with the size of the stats that they have, it's kinda crazy that they even continue to do this, which is why the company is starting to shift everything, or wants to shift every game in the style of Dragon Ball Fighters or 3D because it's so much easier to work with than sprites. A lot of people call it entitlement, but is it wrong to want a better experience for your favorite franchise? To me, it's not even entitlement. It's basic things that have been integrated in Pokemon for years, being some of the best and favorite mechanics about Pokemon being taken out. Every other game that I've been playing for generations of consoles have evolved for any gameplay experiences or other aspects while being true to what makes them special in the first place. My personal opinion, Kingdom Hearts 3 is bigger in its world than KH2. Red Dead Redemption 2 keeps all its features from Red Dead 1. Tekken 7 is a massive improvement from Tekken 6. Understand that Game Freak is a small company which was stated in 2018 that it had around about 140 plus members. But here's the kicker. The CEO of Pokemon, Satoshi Tajiri, has a net worth of $6 billion and collectively since stated on May 16, 2019, Pokemon games have sold in total of over 200 million in sales alone. This is not even including the Pokemon television or merchandise line. So also, what rules out the possibility of getting employees for Pokemon games? Smaller and more niche games than Pokemon usually have bigger staff sizes, and they sell way less than Pokemon games in general. See, this wouldn't be a problem if Masuda comes out in the future or came out and just said, we will patch all the other Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield in an update in the future after launch. Fine, cool, handy dandy, it's lit. But it's crazy because it seems like it's not even the case, period. <sighs> Now here's the thing, I won't call Masuda or Game Freak lazy with the size of the staff that they have, and each time with that small amount of members, they consistently pull out pretty good games. However, I honestly do not believe that it will hurt them if they decide to delay the game to work on it a little bit more. I know that may be impossible with investors or it's business slapping them in the face constantly, but the backlash on this game has been 10 times more incredible than any other Pokemon game I've ever seen. Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield has removed Mega Evolutions and a lot of other things to replace with Dynamaxing, whereas to some fans think the mechanic is mad lame, boring, or just crazy to trade off for Mega Evolutions. Me, I like Dynamaxing. Shovel was right preaching about the problems with Pokemon games all along, but nobody listens until it was too late. That being said, it's your boy Avatar Yaya. Subscribe for a lot of other things. 
I don't know if I want to do Pokemon content, but if y'all want to see more, comment down below. I got you. Um, follow me on Twitter at Avatariaya TV and join me on my Discord in the description down, down below. And follow me on Instagram. And remember, you guys are golden, and that is raw. Squala, peace.